What's up everyone? Welcome to Coffee with Ola. Today with Wolfgang Van Halen. Dude, Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having Holy. me, man. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, you know, I actually saw you uh, two days ago together with my wife at uh, Sweden Rock. Sweden Rock, it was amazing. Although, uh, you know, we, we, we had just come from download and we just barely made it. Like it was so much travel that I literally rolled out of bed onto the stage. I don't think I've ever woken up so close to a performance oh, okay, before, okay. but it, it was it was really fun. It was amazing. Is it your first time playing yeah, in Sweden? Yeah, very first time playing Sweden Rock. Yes. Uh, but uh, no, we, we played it in Sweden uh, last year. We were touring with uh, Alter Bridge and Hailstorm, and it was right. a really fun time. Right, so uh, I just wanted to, uh, because in before this, I started listening a lot to uh, your first album, and you now you have second a new one's album. coming out uh, August fourth. Okay, all right, yeah. and uh, but singles are out. I've been working out to the album, so <laughs> it's been approved for working out. It works. Thank you very much. And uh, Luis actually said when we were standing there uh, watching you guys at Sweden Rock, like, you know, he's one of the few that actually sings really well, like live. <laughs> because there's one thing about about singing on an album, you know. Yeah. Even I can sing on an album. Well, it's tough, especially this doing this uh, the festival circuit. It's like you really don't have. And it's not it's not your it's not your stage. You come there, you know. And yeah, you set no, up and I enjoy the process. It's fun because it's like you're auditioning for everyone. You right. know, and the, you know this is our first time doing the the festival circuit. Like, like I said, and uh, nobody knows you, so it's really fun to be like, hey, you know, stick around. And when you see the crowd grow as you're playing, it's like, well, that's pretty cool. Like job well done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, you're in a pretty special spot where you know it's such a new band too like it's you only have that one album and the second yeah. one is coming but at the same time it seems that you you have so much attention around the band it's very impressive to see how how you kind of built this it's uh, it's crazy man i never could have expected uh to to, to be where we are you know kind of i think the yeah yesterday was the uh two-year anniversary of the first album coming out oh wow um, so i just uh it's very humbling. It's it's uh, it's an honor to to be doing what I'm doing. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I heard that uh, I read that you record all your like the instruments yourself for the album. So. Everything you hear on a Mammoth album is uh, played and written by me. That's that's insane. Like uh, <laughs> how how do you? Keep control over yourself. Do, 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 you, do you have anyone that you can that can challenge you? Like in this Elvis Basquet, my producer. He's okay. he's kind of the other half in yeah. the studio. All right. I think a lot of people go like, "Oh, you're playing everything. You you, yeah. do, you don't uh, you don't have anybody to bounce stuff off to." Exactly. Band, you know, it's like, but he's he is that for me. He's a very talented musician, first mm -hmm. and foremost. But he's a wonderful producer, and he knows how to challenge me exactly. Like, yeah. Like you. So did you, you started with playing drums when you were? When yeah, you when I was nine years old. Oh. My dad. <laughs> He, he he brought me to a table and he was like, do this on the table and then, and if you can do your foot at the exact opposite of your left hand, that's highway to hell. Oh. And the second <laughs> I did that, he was like, yes, he can do it. And he got me a, he got me a V drum kit. Oh, uh, and then I ended up getting a, a, a kit a year later, like a, an acoustic kit. All right, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. But like this, the singing part of it all, just are you self-talk with most of the things that you? Ian, yeah, it's funny. Everybody, uh, given uh, my my family, you know, my uncle and, and my father, yeah. people assume that they just kind of drilled everything into me and taught me everything. But they, no, nah, they. It was uh, dad taught me that for drums, and then I kind of listened to stuff and figured stuff out on my own. Um, and then with guitar, I I picked it up when I was twelve because I wanted to play something for a talent show, mm -hmm. or it wasn't a talent show; it was like graduation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, from there, I would just look at tabs, like learning chop suey by system right. of a down, just kind of like learning how tabs work. And from there, I just kind of, I taught myself, you know, uh, yeah. as, as hard to believe as that, that might sound given who my dad is, but he was a really bad teacher. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he would just kind of, and I don't mean that in an insulting way, I mean that in an endearing way, because he would just kind of be, he'd be like, just, you know, he'd be Eddie Van Halen for yeah. a second, and then you'd, he'd be like, do that. And it's like, yeah. no, I don't know how. I'm, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> I mean, there, there's specific guitar players are, are teachers, yeah. and some are just artists. Yeah. You know, there's there's a very big difference between I remember I, I asked him, I was like, hey, Dad, can you call Paul Gilbert, and maybe he could give me a lesson? <laughs> and he, he did call him. He's like, what? like are you kidding me? <laughs> like, you're you. Like, yeah. He's like, I suck at teaching, though. It was, never happened, but... Uh, I would still love to have take a lesson from Paul. He's awesome. But, so I guess you had a lot of music just all over the place, like through your whole 
Yeah, I think that's why I ended up just playing the amount of instru instruments that I that I that I do is that uh, just being in the environment just made me want to be like, hey, there's a bass here, let's pick that up. Yeah. Hey, Al's in the bathroom, let me sit on this kit for a second. Yeah. You know, type stuff like that. <laughs> so, what are your influences? Like, what what did you listen to? It's funny. Gr growing up, my first like this is my band that I've discovered was Blink-182. Okay, yeah. Uh, Travis Barker, Enema of the State, that album uh, taught me a lot uh, mm -hmm. drumming. Single kick too, like the stuff yeah. he does on that album, very cool. But it wasn't until uh, middle school when 10,000 Days came out by Tool mm -hmm. and everybody, everybody was listening to Tool and I was like, what is this band? Yeah. And then I heard Anima for the first time and that's when I was like, oh, this is, okay, this is, songs can be 13 minutes, that's crazy. Yeah. And uh, I remember learning, hearing the song Anima, and I was like, I want to learn how to do that. And I couldn't do it. And I had yet to hear a song that I couldn't kind of get the grasp of, mm -hmm. like within a couple listens. And so that just made me challenge myself. And I noticed a big uptick in my skills once I started listening to Tool. That's cool. How, <laughs> how old were you then? You were... That was, what, 2004? I was like 13, wow. 14. And yeah. it wasn't too, like, very long after that you started actually playing with your dad. It was right around there, actually, yeah. It was around 15 uh, when we just started jamming for fun. Um, it was just a thing that was, you know, he was like, hey, you want to jam? Sure. And I made a, a list of songs and I went home and uh, learned them all. And then we just started jamming. We jammed for like a couple, like a year or two before it was yeah. like, hey, there's something here that's actually worth, you know, this isn't just kind of a, oh, look at the dumb kid yeah. <laughs> trying. It was yeah. like, hey, this actually works. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I called Dave and that's that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah. That's so uh, I mean that's very unusual way of getting into the touring. Yeah. Or like just being a very a unusual artist. <laughs> <laughs> but it also uh, I guess you I guess you have to kind of mature very early into yeah. What, what, what it is to tour. I mean it's it's work. It's yeah, work. just in terms of work in general and just like the things you experiment uh, experience uh, being that age uh, when you are literally the only one separated by yeah. at least 25 years yep. yeah yeah <laughs> um uh but yeah i mean uh you you just kind of do it i guess you know i wouldn't have been there had they not believed i could do it no. so um looking back on it yeah it was a lot to handle and i kind of can't believe i was able to pull it off but uh yeah very you're you know you're more uh the experience definitely gave me a lot to uh to yeah. learn uh, what to do and what not to do mm -hmm. And then you also uh, you you also got picked up by Tremani, so you. Uh... It's funny. Uh, I I had a I was on the cover of Bass Player magazine uh, in 2012 yeah. or 2011. It was when the Van Halen album I played on came out, uh, and I'm uh, in in the interview at the very end. They're like, "What's your dream? Like, what 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 would you want to do?" And I was like, "I have two. I'd love to play with my friends." in Tremonti, because <laughs> uh, Garrett, who plays drums in Mammoth yeah. in the live band, he was the drummer of, of right. Tremonti. Um, and uh, I was like, that'd be fun to jam with them. And also I thought it'd be, it'd be really fun to record an album on my own like Dave Grohl did yeah. uh, for the first Foo Fighters album. And to now realize I'm on the, uh, on the other side of doing both of those. It's like, wow, I <laughs> achieved my dream. That's really cool. <laughs> and that's, a, that's funny that you say that because I draw a lot of parallels between Dave Grohl, in this case, where, you know, he made his own album and, you know, he recorded everything himself, went out on tour. Uh, I was actually at that tour, like 96 or something wow. like that in, here in Stockholm. And, uh, and you know, I hear, I hear a lot of influences from Foo Fighters and, you know, we, me and my wife are big fans of Foo Fighters. So it was like an instant love <laughs> for the album. Uh, and we heard it and you've also done all these, like, you know, the Taylor Hawkins stuff and, mm. And uh, there's just so much impressing, like, impressing footage out there <laughs> where you're like, you're playing all these songs and you're you're shredding. <laughs> like, it, it, you took a lot of people by surprise. Yeah. Why you just suddenly go up there and completely shredding your face off? Like, yeah, you've done that on the albums as well. I hear like the the, the yeah, shredding but you, you you never know. If, I mean, hell, half the people live are, are it's tracks and stuff nowadays, which is such a huge. You heard it right there. <laughs> I mean, can I curse or not? Or is that? Of course, you know, it's just a fucking bummer, man. Oh, like, cool. it really is. I'm, like, I'm so happy you did that. Yeah, because... no, it's just like, look, I I think there's there's a lot. I think everybody else draws their own line. Yeah with what tracks are acceptable or not, but it's like if you're pumping in the main guitar riff 
and the lead vocals and actual fucking drums. Yeah. Like recorded, pre-recorded drums, like that's a problem. That is like, a problem. You should be able to play your shit. What is live if it's Yeah, exactly. Like I can understand you don't have a keyboard player, so we need the pad. You know, that's fine. Like, you can't carry around a 60-piece orchestra, mm -hmm. you know, so you got the strings. Like that's fine. But like the like lead vocal, main guitar, main bass and the drums, you should be playing that. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's know? it's funny you say this because this is a, this has kind of like blossomed up uh, lately in regards of uh, drummers using that's certain parts like, yeah or like the, or like the kicks stuff. are on the, like dude like learn how to fucking do it like it's or just... you don't think it's the problem of just overproducing because people can overproduce and record their their I song and make it super impressive you know because you can click them in i guess or, like, but i mean very like fast takes and... sure but i mean like I, I never do anything in the studio that i can't do live yeah. like sure there are tricks mm -hmm. uh you know that you could do to do stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to do but why would you want to do that because it's it's about creating music that you're capable of doing and that you can do live mm. i don't know it's it's not a i go to a concert to see uh bands play the fuck out of their music mm -hmm. like mashuga mm -hmm. that's my favorite concert i'll ever see yes. because they they just kill it like yeah. they 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 stand there and they just play the fuck out of their music and like that's what I don't go to a concert to see a guy going around and be like how you feeling tonight yeah. like that's that's not my that's not my shit like I, I like Tool they stand there and they destroy yeah. like that's what I love about music and yeah. it's like that's what we try to do with Mammoth is that you know we first and foremost like we are playing everything and we're doing it to the best of our ability yeah. I, I think the problem is just the since a lot of modern bands are just starting to to uh, like nibble a little bit on like what's okay and mm -hmm. what's okay, and it becomes more and more accepted yeah you know and you know and they they claim that well you know they do it in pop and they do it in yeah i don't know or I whatever just, I, I never want to make excuses like no. i just that that feels like i don't know i have morals <laughs> it feels yeah. immoral yeah. Also, <laughs> to, that's good to hear i think it's, it's a problem out. it's an instant it's an instagram problem or like yeah no and problem. especially now you know doing uh doing all these festivals and you see bands you're like wow i wonder what they're like and then it's just fucking tracks <laughs> yes. it's like come on man like eh, whatever well, <laughs> we don't that's yeah. not something i'm gonna do well the, the thing is that you can instantly hear if it's tracks or not mm -hmm. like if if you listen or pay oh attention. it's like wow their voice is really loud during the show but they're quiet as hell in between songs yeah exactly. you know it's like okay yeah exactly or sense. just like okay everything's played to a click or yeah. you know they only have they play like it's very common that some even play with stems in their in ears that's great just to uh, yeah which is like i understand if it's like insanely complicated and very like you know mm -hmm. very fast music well yeah i mean like we for example we play to a click we yeah. have click in our ears yeah. but I mean, you can still groove it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Your exactly. music is not so super fast that yeah, you, it's not like you know, it's, it's not going to go all over the place. Exactly. It's like when we play, it's like it's almost like all the wheels are coming off a little bit, <laughs> like the, on the verge. Yeah, of, you, know. you need that. Yeah, it's like we just have the you yeah. know the four. It's like when you have like a a thirty second metronome going on oh, yeah, to, yeah. for like I'm sure that's what like animals as leaders uses or something. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> With all the ships. I think it, I think for that, I mean, having click in your ears so that. That's okay, yeah. in my opinion. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, we don't do it, but well, hey, with, with Van Halen, uh, uh, Al would have click in okay. his ears, but we'd play to him. Yeah. Um, uh, I wouldn't have click in my ears, but like, I don't know. I, click isn't bad. That's no. not cheating. No, but not. that is technically tracks. Yeah. <laughs> so no. you can see, so you can be like, oh, they, they use tracks, and it's like, well, yeah, but it's just a click track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what, what type of gear are you using live? Uh, live, we're you know repping the brand. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I'm playing a. Uh, I'm playing through the uh, the 50 watt 6L6. Yes. Um, Frank is playing the uh, the S. Okay. Yeah. Um, and John is playing uh, the EL34. All mm -hmm. the 50 watts through the 412s. Uh, it just sounds fucking killer. <laughs> like it's all you need. It, so, did you like purposely pick three different ones just uh, to Matt, Matt Bruck, who is um, currently the other half of running uh, uh, the brand yeah. uh, with me. Um, he was he was the one who was like you know this would work better let's give frank the s because he does more like lead stuff yeah. on top and then we can get john uh on the el34 which would be good for like the the meaty uh you know rhythms he does yeah. and for me uh, the 606 kind of in between so it, it just kind of fit very cool very cool <laughs> so um 
I have the uh, what is it the the, the stealth mm -hmm. EL34. It's probably one of my favorite amplifiers. It's so great, freaking good. I mean, I play <laughs> I play metal. Yeah. And you know, it's uh, it's it's perfect. It's incredible. <laughs> like, but but uh, d d these 50 watts, d these are the small ones. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you don't need more for a live show. No, really. It's it's. Cr I think so many people are like, why aren't you using 100 watts? It's like because we don't need it. <laughs> like yeah. it sounds as good as it as it does already. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and plus it's. Not as heavy. Yeah. Still heavy, but not as heavy. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> and uh, guitar-wise? Uh, guitar-wise, uh, very exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm playing a, a, a new guitar that mm -hmm. uh, we're sort of crash testing with the brand. Uh, you know, um, uh, it's the, called the SA126. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the first uh, semi-hollow. Uh, I guess you could call it a performance uh, semi-hollow. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, I don't know to to lead you into the process of of how we came about it. Um, starting Mammoth, I thought it was really important for me to have my own sort of tone, my own my own sort of sound, instead yeah. of just playing a Wolfgang uh, through 5150s and just kind of calling it a day. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I ended up, uh, you know, being attracted to the sort of classic semi-hollows um, and that sort of warm uh, tone. Uh, and the brand does not offer that, uh, especially uh, since you know most of the older i mean really the the semi hollows don't you know they're always like a a really big wide almost like baseball bat mm -hmm. neck mm -hmm. um and so the the instrument didn't really exist so it was fun to sort of put merge the worlds of you know the classic semi hollows with like the performance uh sort of guitars that the brand is known for uh, and kind of putting them together, so it's like a marriage of, of, of like a Wolfgang. And well, actually, you know what? We're using the uh, the neck profile of the the Bumblebee, the the okay. black and the black and yellow. Uh, I, I was like the bass. Um, uh, it's definitely uh, been moved around a little bit, but it's like sort of that really thin but wide. Yeah. It's it's. It, I mean, I, I can't wait for you to try because like it's a like a, it's, it's a very body. it's a very shredder. Ne it's yeah, it's like a shredder hollow body, which is really That's cool. it's a it's a fun little marriage of of both. Um, it's got a uh, a basswood center block, which that was Dad's like choice tone okay. wood. Yeah. Um, and it's got this really cool, uh, the way uh, Chip Ellis, who's the designer, uh, designed like the uh, how his whole process for putting it together is is, is really cool. It's got a, a maple top, uh, mahogany like sides and, and back, um, ebony fretboard. Uh, I believe that the neck is maple too. I have to double check. Uh, but yeah, it's badass and it's really fun to be crash testing uh, these these we, there's about seven prototypes We did three early on and then these new ones that I have on tour with me are sort of the new uh, Batch it's like a new uh, assembly method uh, So, you know, we're just always trying to Improve upon and what, what we can uh, do better, but uh, yeah, it's really exciting Do you <laughs> have uh, like how, how much are you involved in the like the 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 new product lines and all of that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's a tough thing because it's like uh, I'm doing everything I can to sort of keep up. Luckily, you know, Matt has been uh, involved in the brand uh, and involved with uh, my dad and everything he does uh, since I've been, uh, since I was, my mom was pregnant with me. Oh, like yeah. Matt was there when my mom walked into the studio and said, I'm pregnant. So uh, he's literally, there's no one better to be yeah. Uh, uh, heading the brand and you know dad wanted me there with him so I'm doing the best I can yeah. to kind of uh, help you know uh, uh, dad still had so many fucking ideas uh, that it's like we have so much uh, kind of uh, cooking that's really exciting and then we have you know uh, the essay which uh, is looking like next year uh, okay. will be finally coming out which is very exciting okay. um, but yeah no it's uh, yeah just kind of uh, Doing, doing my best. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Uh, very exciting. Also, like I've been trying out a lot of the like the iconic, uh, and uh, I have a small little request. Yeah, an even smaller one. Yeah, like I've tried the the fifteen watt uh -huh. tube, incredible, but <laughs> like a a fifteen watt even smaller. You got would, it. Would be awesome. You got it. That's, I will uh, talk to Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. No, just a little request. I mean, everyone's. Yeah, Matt too. By the way, he wanted. I talk, spoke to him yesterday. He he loves you. He's yeah, yeah, like yeah. like we're just the brand loves you. You're 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 the oh, best. Thank you so, so. much. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, but I'm just saying like the uh, 
people just want smaller and smaller yeah now. i mean i'm oh, yeah. a big fan of having big amplifiers but at the same time you know kicking around a small combo that oh, sounds kick ass it's the best yeah it's it's the, <laughs> the funniest man and uh you got it uh you can just put a microphone on there and i mean you have one of these for instance mm -hmm. and you just like just mic it up but it sounds pretty, yeah no, pretty badass. oh yeah no it's it, it's perfect so yeah i will put that request in awesome <laughs> so uh i read somewhere that you're like a fan of video games big time yeah skyrim shirt did you see the Starfield thing yesterday? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. It was uh, very promising. It looks really cool. But over promising. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're, that's you get near that that cyberpunk sort of over promising yeah. trepidatiousness that you want to be careful with. And no with. man's sky. Yeah. Exactly. So, but hey, I think they've they've kind of uh, uh, undone that. They've done a really good job. The No Man's Sky dudes as being like, hey, you know, we fucked up. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's here's, seems, it seems here's all this game. free shit for yeah. years and years and years. I think they they, they made up for that, yeah. but uh, yeah, no. Star so that's one of the games you look really forward to. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm just playing the shit out of Zelda. Okay, um, same. But uh, I think I have like 85 hours in it. Anytime I'm not on stage or sleeping, I'm, I'm, I've been trying to play through that. It's a good game. <laughs> oh yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> awesome. And the other types of are you into like Demon Souls and Dark Souls? And yeah, like yeah. I platinumed Bloodborne. Not to oh. to uh, uh, no. I mean that's probably the easiest one but uh yeah no i've i still need to beat dark souls 3 mm -hmm. uh sekiro mm -hmm. and that's the hardest one yes yeah, i heard sekiro is the hardest one uh and then uh elden ring yeah. uh but I, I don't know there's a part of me that like wants to do things in order even yeah. though that sekiro is not technically yeah. part of it i just it's like i haven't done demon soul or Dark Souls yeah. 3, so it's like, I need to beat that before I can yeah. play anything. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm weird that way. <laughs> Does it feel like, uh, do you have a limit to yourself how much you play video games in terms of, because you seem to be a very productive guy. Uh, no, I mean, I think when I'm home, all that really matters apart from, you know, uh, luckily I have a wonderful team around me that helps <laughs> make the mammoth machine go right. and lets me know where I need to be and what to do mm -hmm. uh, so I can focus on the creation of, of the music and, yeah. and stuff but when I have nothing to do I'm either playing video games or just like doing nothing on the couch with my fiance like that's all that that's that, those are the best things I can be doing <laughs> <laughs> or both playing video games with her oh so, she's yeah. a fan too yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've made her a, a, a dork over the years, like me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So what, what is like a, a day in your life? Where, where do you go? Like, do you have a studio or do you have an office? Or? Yeah, no, um, uh, I, 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 I've got the, uh, the 5150 is where I record, yeah. um, which is where, where Van Halen recorded everything from uh, 1984 yeah. uh, uh, onwards. Um, and so that's where we recorded everything for, for Mammoth 2. Yeah. Uh, for the first album, it was sort of uh, recorded over, I think the first tracks we recorded were in January 2015. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it took me so long to figure out the direction and like who I was as my own songwriter with that first album that yeah. it's like, we recorded it over three years, um, some there. And then by the time I'd written more songs, we were rehearsing for that last Van Halen tour. Um, so we recorded some drum tracks uh, in Burbank, and then we recorded some in uh, at my uh, producer's uh, studio in Florida. So that was just kind of all over the place. Uh, but so it was really fun for the second album to just hunker down and record everything uh, over the course of two and a half months. Do you at feel like that you figured out the way and the path that Mammoth? I knew that setting? I wanted to uh, one just kind of challenge the sound. Uh, I think the, the coming into the second album. Uh, with a bit more confidence because like I knew what it was uh, and I kind of wanted to challenge it a bit and I think the live you know touring for the last two years really informed the whole process so it's a bit heavier like there's even it's funny there's a there's like a moment on the first song that's almost like a mushuga fucking gent part that's like really <laughs> it's it's like anybody who who isn't familiar with that will be like what the fuck but uh, anybody who knows that I love Mashuga will be like, oh, cool. It's like his little little version little of tribute. it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I think overall it's a bit heavier, but it still fits within the mammoth sort of umbrella. Uh, like there's a there's definitely a softer song that's almost like a sequel to our song, uh, Distance. Okay. Yeah. So it's like yeah. it's it's still very encompassing of the What's sound. The, this, the distance was the first single. That right? was the very first song we released. How yeah. did that feel? Uh, that? Yeah, it was uh, very emotional. Very. Uh, yeah, I'll never forget it. Uh, it's very, I, I, that was not the first song I was expecting uh, everybody to hear uh, under all the circumstances, yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, to have uh, 
people, so many people uh, resonate with it was yeah. a pretty incredible feeling. I was not expecting that at all. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is so cool, man. Uh, <laughs> do you want to like jam or play some guitar? Yeah, uh, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's do whatever. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> cool, man. Well, Wolfgang, thank you so much. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm just gonna see. I'm gonna probably go watch you tomorrow. Oh hell yeah! Stockholm. Let's do so it. I'm really looking forward to. It. I'll Very bring cool. my wife again. She's a fan. Cool. I mean, we're both fans again. So. <laughs> Very cool, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See ya. Thanks for having me. <laughs>